cool. All right, sweet. Um, all right, so it looks like everyone is on the call who has to be here. I uh, figured we might as well start off. First of all, Tan and team, I would like to thank you so much for coming on the call and uh, answering the questions we have prepared for you today. It really means a lot to have this shareholder engagement. I know we always appreciate it when you come on and give us your time. I know you're all very busy, but uh, any information you can provide us is always useful and worthwhile. And we hope that uh, these calls can continue in the future and that we can always stay up to date on what's going on with Vivanti. Sure, okay. Well, uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, are we ready to get started here? Uh, yeah, might as well get started. So I'll just start off by asking the first question we have on the call. Um, first off, oh, before we do that, uh, before we do that, could I just uh, just say something to everybody real quick? Yes, please. Okay. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Um, well, good evening. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today. Uh, we're very pleased. Uh, to be able to welcome back those of you that have been with us for a long time now, um, as well as the people that are new to this conference. It is always a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Um, and, but before we get started, I would like to um, express my sincere appreciation for those who have organized this call, Jimmy, Sal, Jason, and many others. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, so uh, thank you very much. We appreciate you. So uh, in today's call, we'll go through the questions that were posted to us last week, and also we'll be giving you some brief updates on where we are as a company. Um, however, I need to let you know in advance that our responses will need to be confined to the uh, company's existing filings, meaning we won't discuss material events that have not been properly filed with the SEC. But regardless, by the end of this call, we hope that you walk away with a good summary on the overall scheme of things for VMNT. So uh, with that said, we, we're ready to start, Jimmy. Okay, great. So for the first question, what do you think the impact of Vietnam's future economic policy will be from the latest Vietnamese president's resignation? How will, the impact, how will that impact the future of Vietnam and the banking business industry? Well, um, it's unknown at this time what kind of short-term impact the recent political activity in Vietnam will have on this overall economy. Uh, we do know that in recent years, the government has put a strong emphasis on public investment in major infrastructure projects to accelerate, uh, accelerate economic growth. So there is a question whether all that could be slowed down by an ongoing anti-corruption crackdown, right? But that remains to be seen. Um, for us, we don't foresee any problems in the banking sector. Uh, from our vantage point, we don't see a negative impact on the digital transformation and the adoption of innovative technology by banks and financial service providers in the country. Now, keep in mind, uh, Vietnam's economy was one of the best performing in Asia last year, if not the best. Uh, but there are concerns about a global um, recession impacting the country's export-dependent economy uh, due to major markets like the U.S. and Europe being hit by an inflation crisis, as well as the uh, geopolitical tensions related to the situation in Ukraine. So. The State Bank of Vietnam has stated that they will prioritize uh, policies related to keeping inflation under control and to maintain the valuation of its currency to support exporting businesses and meet ongoing credit demand. Definitely, um, there are challenges facing uh, Vietnam's banking sector due to their dependency on the capital markets. So, Liquidity could be an issue if the political tensions were to slow down investment disbursement in the country. Uh, but we, we believe this is a good thing, uh, as it will lead to the acceleration of long-delay you know, structural reforms 
it would set strong foundations for a market economy that uh, promotes the private sector even more for future economic expansion. Excellent. That is certainly great to hear. Um, I'll just go on to the second question. There are reports suggesting a slowdown of the global economy could have an impact on the growth of Vietnam's economy, which relies heavily on exports. Have you seen any negative impacts so far? Have you seen any sign of increase in unemployment, slowdown of SME borrowing, or increase in bad debt? When the downturn happens, will VMNT be in a position to prepare for the opportunity? What will VMNT do to prepare for it? Why do you think VMNT can be attractive to investors if, when Vietnam's uh, Vietnam experiences an economic slowdown? Will global recession hinder VMNT financing ability? Will there be risks of private fund withdrawal during an economic downturn? And how will VMNT prevent fund withdrawal from helping as this is a cash credit intensive business which relies on a high level of consistent funding? Well, Vietnam's economy rebounded uh, surprisingly well in 2022 and grew to 8.02%. Uh, but of course, it is certainly not immune to the current uh, global macro environment. Um, as Vietnam's GDP is still growing very strong, uh, inflation and other factors uh, affecting the economy are, are, are much less severe than in neighboring countries. Uh, Vietnam's public debt to GDP ratio was 43% at the end of 2022, which is relatively low and giving the country uh, solid macroeconomic foundations. However, there are several external factors that could affect the overall outlook for 2023, like the, the number of new orders is projected to drop in the first half of this year with possible recessions and economic slowdown in Vietnam's three major trading partners, right? The the US, the EU, and China. Uh, on top of that, you got the appreciating uh, US dollar that could continue to put pressure on the Vietnamese currency and the country's foreign reserves. And growth deceleration in China, well, we also have an impact on Vietnam's economic prospects in 2023. And again, uh, last but not least, the situation in Ukraine, if not improved, uh, you know, could again drive up energy and commodity prices and directly affect the exporting sector in Vietnam. But overall, there are still many reasons for optimism on uh, Vietnam's economic prospects for 2023. I mean, regardless of uh, the challenging global economic environment, investment from overseas is still very strong and has even picked up recently. Uh, foreign direct investment disbursements rose to 10 billion, um, 10 billion US dollars in the first half of 2022, the, the highest increase in five years. Um, foreign investments in manufacturing, particularly in electronics, uh, continued to grow rapidly in 2022. Many international companies such as Samsung, either significantly expanded their existing plans in Vietnam or relocated to Vietnam. So as in many cases, foreign investors think long-term when they make their investments and they just continue strong interest in Vietnam as a destination to place funding, which clearly shows a long-term vote of confidence in the country. Um, we strongly believe that Vietnam will be able to brace the headwinds of 2023 and beyond. Um, we're still seeing a strong demand for credit from the SMEs. Uh, there's no doubt that Vietnam's economic prospects for the medium and long term uh, remain positive. Excellent. All right. Thank you for that answer, Tan. Uh, for the third question, neobanks that are consumer focused are not profitable and are failing due to offering products with poor margins. Will the developing VMNT platform only focus on SME lending to give the margin VMNT needs to start up? Yes, our, our focus has, all been, uh, has always been on serving the SMEs uh, since day one, and uh, we're not changing that focus. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so, Tan, back in September of 2022, VMNT announced it had launched a pilot program for its U.S. exporting SME lending product. 
when did the SME lending pilot program officially begin? Who was responsible for running the pilot testing as VMT currently has no operations team? Is VMT or PVCOM funding the pilot test run? How many testing parties and how much lending was involved? Um, how much uh, lending was involved in lending during the pilot run? In what made industry are the businesses participating in the pilot program? Um, just further questions like, uh, or further statements uh, building up on the pilot. I think the main gist of it is, can you give us as much details about the pilot program as possible? Let us know if there are any repaid borrowers. You also mentioned that the pilot program is supposed to last six to nine months. Um, just any details to provide, that'd be great. Yeah, actually, I'm going to defer all this, um, all the questions related to the pilot program to Steve. He's in charge of that. So, Steve, are you on? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm here. <clears throat> so, um, so yes, to, to answer who's responsible for running the pilot program, um, I'm doing that um, with a, a team, a small team that we've um, uh, hired here that will, you know, become part of the larger uh, team that we have. Um, in terms of the, the pilot program and the roles and responsibilities of Vermonti versus PVCom Bank and how uh, the test is being run, um, I'll refer back to our, our partnership agreement. Um, Vermonti is responsible for marketing, sales, credit underwriting, um, operationally uh, managing the customer and providing the funding. PB Bank provides all of the uh, compliance, regulatory, and access uh, to uh, the Vietnam uh, banking system through its back end uh, in terms of that. And so that is that uh, partnership, those roles and responsibilities um, is what we are testing uh, primarily during the, the pilot run um, in terms of that. Um, the pilot um, uh, did start uh, in September. We brought the first, uh, or we're looking, <coughs> excuse me, we brought the first uh, clients on just recently. And um, we are just now running through the first uh, cycle. Um, there's not really enough data um, to um, talk about what's the average cycle time uh, and so forth, and that uh, we've just started. Um, so we really won't have data for another uh, month or two. Uh, in terms of uh, what it looks like. Um, in terms of the industries that we're looking at, um, the, the primary ones um, are, um, right now that we're running through the testing is uh, textiles, apparel, uh, and uh, furniture, as well as uh, parts companies. Um, and uh, most of the uh, processes that we're doing um, we're working uh, those through uh, with PVCom Bank. Um, let's see, could you scroll up, uh, Jimmy, so that I could see the rest of the questions? Uh, no, uh, down, I'm sorry, down. Um, and so um, from, uh, and so from uh, what we're seeing so far, uh, the process is um, working and, um, you know, answering the, the, the questions in terms of, uh, making money from the pilot, um, you know, from a pricing standpoint, we expect to make uh, money from the pilot, um, but uh, we'll, we don't know exactly uh, where it will fall um, as we run through the process um, here over the next two or three months. So we're really too early um, uh, in terms of uh, getting solid data on uh, some of these uh, items. But what I can say is, is that not only are we testing the process of processing, um, you know, during the first month or two, we also uh, were testing our ability to market and acquire uh, customers. So uh, we also took that into account. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, so kind of just like going back on the timeline, the last call, you expected the pilot to run from six to nine months, and that was back in September. Mm -hmm. You, yep. so I guess six months is March, nine months would be June. Yep. You expect yep. the pilot to still end around that time, or it's still yeah, like we yeah we still expect it to end around that time. It might go a month longer, um, just uh, just because we also tested the marketing piece, so we didn't you know come in with a client day one, uh, we wanted to test the acquisition um, 
on the platform. And so it might run to July, but we, we, we still expect to be done uh, within that time frame and be able to, to report results in our financial statements at that point. Okay, great, thanks. Um, the next question piggybacks off of that a little bit. Um, yeah. If it's too early to tell still, but are there problems that uh, VMT and PBCOM are currently seeing from the pilot run? If so, are you able to share a few with us? Mm -hmm. um, have you uh, been able to resolve any of these potential problems? And does the current test include testing EKYC or API? Um, yeah, I can answer the last one first. Yes, it does include testing the, the KY, EKYC um, and how we're going to um, pass information uh, between us and, and PBCOM Bank. In terms of seeing problems, we're, we're not you know, we're, we're very early in the process, so we're really not seeing that. The, the, the one challenge that we are seeing, um, both us and PVCom Bank, is not in terms of our process. It's more in terms of Vietnam uh, is and the state bank are still working through um, clarifications uh, to the EKYC and some of the uh, digital banking um, legislation that's gone through where there's some gray areas that they need to weigh in on. And so um, during the process, they're doing that. And so we're having to tweak things that are related to, you know, the early stages of what uh, of EKYC being um, implemented in Vietnam. So those are the things that we have to tweak that we're working uh, through. So um, so that's really the, the only thing. We, we expect that over the next year. Um, as they roll out um, the new digital banking uh, regulation uh, in Vietnam. Um, the state bank wants um, all banks to have a fully digital presence for the entire population. And so they're trying to um, you know, consistently uh, upgrade their regulations and legislation to support that. And so that causes tweaks to both the platform and the processes. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Um, Next question, did the pilot run only include SME lending in Vietnamese Dong? Were there cross-border business cases involved in the test run, which included foreign exchange transactions? Um, how will the actual, uh, how will an actual cross-border transaction work? Um, who will be responsible for the foreign exchange activities and how will VMT keep the transaction costs low? Um. So, I mean, you know, when the, the SME lending that we're focused on is export related. So typically the transactions are not in Vietnamese DOM. Uh, they tend to be in the currency of the buyer, whether it's a buyer from the US, it'll be US dollars. If it's from Europe, it'll be in Euro. Um, and so um, most of the, well, I could say all of the invoices are in um, the foreign currency um, of which, you know, we support and which uh, PBCom Bank also supports. And so um, when it comes to uh, transacting that and, and exchanging it back into Vietnamese Dong, that's done by PBCom Bank um, and they use their the banking system to, to, to bring that back uh, in. But um, with export, many times um, the foreign exchange transactions right now are really managed by the company uh, in terms of when they decide to do it. Um, companies will hold US dollars because um, many of the raw materials uh, that they have, they have to pay for um, in US dollars or foreign currency. So uh, a lot of what uh, comes in, they don't uh, convert, but that which they do is done through uh, PVCom Bank. And um, PVCom Bank is working with us to give a preferential rate to those, um, to those uh, businesses that come through the Vermonti platform. Okay, great, thank you. Next question, if there is revenue generated from the pilot run, does 100% of the revenue belong to VMT? Could investors expect to see reflected on the VMNT upcoming financial statement? I guess you already answered that question, but just going back to the revenue, who actually? Sure, sure. Yeah, the yeah we the one hundred percent of the revenue, um, you know, comes to us. Um, you know, we do pay a, a fee to PVCom Bank as part of our partnership to um, you know to support us on the back end, but the revenue comes to us, and it is our revenue. And um, in the upcoming financial statements, because um, 
the actual lending part of the process happens so late, there would be very little um, uh, in the upcoming financial uh, statements, uh, if any. Okay, great, thank you. Um, are the pilot testing and platform development two different concepts? I know you guys have talked about in the past about developing you know, this platform for the SMEs to utilize, but we also have the pilot run. Is the pilot run utilizing the platform? I guess just kind of dive into the two differences and like what's actually going on here with these concepts. Um, they're basically the same thing that, you know, we're in order to do the pilot testing, we need to, you know, test through our, our platform and then make uh, tweaks to it. So they're, they're really not two different concepts. Okay, thank you. Um, so then will VMNT and PVCOM be able to launch the platform after the pilot testing is completed? And should investors expect a po uh, the platform launch to happen in 2023? Um, when the platform is actually launched, do you, uh, what is the projected revenue expectation in the first year? And what is the projected size of this initial project? Sure. Um, yeah, we do plan to, to launch um, after pilot uh, testing. Um, we will, at the end of the pilot test, you know, evaluate everything. If there's any major changes that we'll need to do, we'll do that. And then we would um, launch the, the full platform after that. And, you know, we are looking to, to launch this uh, this year. Um, you know, in, in terms of projected revenue expectation, part of that will be uh, you know, part of that will be determined um, based upon uh, the the test uh, of the pilot to give us an idea of ramp up and what we would be able to do um, from a capacity standpoint. Um, but in terms of um, you know what the SME lending market size is. The, the focus for us is is not the entire SME market because we're we're not really looking to lend with inside of Vietnam. We're really focused on the funding gap. You know, SMEs that cannot get uh, funding because there's not access to that. And in Vietnam, that's about a twenty billion dollar uh, market. Um, so, in terms of the percentage that we want to capture. Um, ideally, we'd like to capture all of it, but um, we know that that probably won't uh, be the case, but we're looking to um, attack a pretty sizable portion of that um, going forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, what will the end user expect to see when the platform is launched? What are the functions available to the end user? Will the platform utilize e-wallet, QR code scanning, or swiping cards? Um, and basically just like, what will that experience look like for the end user? Yeah, the the e-wallet, the, e the QR code and so forth is more consumer focused things. We, we really won't, um, I mean, we won't have that piece of it, but basically what the what, what, what our platform allows for is, is for a small to medium sized business to basically um, sign up their business online, be able to um, request credit, and then once they're approved, um, you know, via the online platform, um, because our product is an invoice lending product, they're able to submit their invoices for approval. And then based upon that approval, um, we will make a credit line available to them that they can draw down uh, on online. And so the idea is, is that they can sign up, get approved for credit, and then uh, draw their funds um, as needed based upon the availability um, of the invoices that they provide. And that'll be the functionality that they'll see. Okay, great, thanks. Um, next question, what are the potential issues that might cause further delay of the launching of the platform? Per available information, VMNT will operate the platform with PVCOM providing technical support is there further information to explain the role of both the VMT and PVCOM to the investor? Um, well, yeah, I mean, in our partnership agreement, you know, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, it's our platform with PVCOM Bank basically providing access to the banking system, compliance, and re regulatory framework uh, supporting us. Um, and then we handle all sales, marketing, credit underwriting, funding, and, and operations uh, in terms uh, of the platform. 
Okay, great. So I guess just to yep. for the third time reiterate the platform. No, no, no worries. The, okay. platform, <laughs> the platform be fully owned by VMNT. There won't be like a co-company that um no VMT and people kind of have a stake in that actually owns the platform. No, we 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 are, we we own the platform and um and so um, the platform is not owned by PVCom Bank. Um, you know, they are our partner. And, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, revenue comes into us and then we, uh, you know, pay, uh, pay them a fee um, as our back end partner. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, this is more of a holistic kind of question, but um, sure. can you just further explain the concept, the vision? and goal of this SME platform? Is it just to, is it just a simply digitized SME lending platform to capture the digitization movement for PVCom? Or will this SME platform create opportunities to directly connect between the private credit and Vietnam SME from capital raising um, with vm and earning various fees, managing the platform, um, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the concept, I mean, yes, we're taking a little bit of advantage of the digitization, but um, the other thing that we're doing is we're actually bringing a form of lending to Vietnam that's not really done. I mean, we see it all the time in the U.S. in the U.S. or in Europe, you know, called asset-based lending or receivable financing or you know, invoice financing, for example. So um, we're actually bringing a new form of credit where we change the relationship between the borrower and the lender, um, where if you look at a traditional banking relationship inside of Vietnam, um, you cannot borrow unless you have cash in the bank. Basically, it has to be a cash secured loan or a real estate secured loan, and then you can use that money for whatever you want. And so you're very limited um, in terms of access to capital. So, so we're changing the dynamics a bit uh, in terms of that. So, um, so we're, we're creating more opportunities for the SMEs where they don't have to put up real estate that they may already have a commercial real estate loan against in order to build their factory. We're giving them access to capital based upon future earnings, which is something that's not really done uh, in Vietnam. And so the vision is, is to create something new and, and, and valuable uh, for them. And, and, and loans are just the first uh, step in this. Um, you know, because right now there's two big problems that SMEs have in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. First one's access to capital. And the second one is, is simple, easy cross-border payments, which are a very distant second to, to getting access to capital. And those are really the two things that we're looking at focusing on. So it's not just about digitizing a current process they have. It's using a digital platform to bring a new type of lending uh, to Vietnam and to the SMEs uh, there that have this real need for capital in order to fuel their export growth. Okay, cool. A um, little sidetrack. Last night I listened to the investor call um, that Judo Bank had posted. They're an Australian neo bank focused on the SMEs. Mm -hmm. And they echoed mm -hmm. a lot of what you and Tan have been talking about regarding building a relationship with the SMEs and just providing them a different experience, not just a digital bank for them to utilize. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, wow, this sounds a lot like VMNT. Um, yeah. And maybe you know, there's some connection there. But yeah. anyway, um, it seems like the relationship is a key component to what SMEs are looking for. Yeah. Um, next question. In the past, Tan talked about VMNT's goal uh, is to create cooperation, not competition within the banking industry um, or with the banking industry, I should say. Mm -hmm. Its vision is to have a synergy of strengths with partners and minimize their weaknesses. Can you provide more details on how to achieve this goal? Are there plans to expand business with PVCom or other companies beyond the SME lending? Yeah, I can just talk about that. So, I mean, uh, the idea is is that um, you know is is to create cooperation, you know, with the banks, you know, in in, in Vietnam, and you know, we could expand. Uh, you know that, but the idea is is that right now banks cannot do the type of lending that we're able to do. 
um, because they're, at least in Vietnam, the way that it is, is that they're required to hold physical collateral in anything that they do. And so if they want to, while they would love to be able to reach this segment of the market and be able to, to, to fund more, they don't have the ability to from two aspects. One is, is compliance and regulatory. The second one is, is that they are capital constrained themselves. And so by us coming in and bringing capital in that we're essentially putting on their balance sheet um, so that we can then lend um, that for them. And then they're partnering with us in terms of, of that. They're making money and they're able to expand into an area where they cannot expand today, both for you know capital constraint reasons and regulatory reasons. So that's where the cooperation uh, comes in is, is that we're not taking business that um, that they're already doing, we're allowing them to access business that they cannot access today, that they don't have the capital, the regulatory framework, or even the expertise to do this type of lending, um, you know, going forward. And so that's where the partnership is uh, in terms of um, not com competing with them, but cooperating with them. Okay, great, thanks. Um... Next question. Aspire just announced a uh, Series C funding round of $100 million. Timo is preparing to launch an SME lending product. How does VMT view the competitive landscape today? How does VMT plan to compete with larger, more funded competitors in the SME lending space? Um, I mean, we still view the competitive landscape today as we did, you know, 12 to to, to 18 months ago when we really started um, looking at this. Um, yes, we expect um, uh, competitors to come in, but with a $20 billion uh, funding gap, there's plenty of room for, for us to play um, with those competitors. The, um, you know, in terms of us competing, um, you know, I know Aspire here, I've seen them in the market. Um, the challenge that they have is, is that they don't have a partnership um, which um, is making it very difficult for them to, um, uh, to lend in this market. And they're actually turning more towards, you know, offering um, bank accounts and, and so forth and, and, and more providing um, easy access to a digital uh, banking product and digital payment product. Um, and so we believe that our, our, our tie up with PVCom Bank um, will give us an advantage, particularly in the lending piece um, to allow us to compete in a pretty wide open space uh, where there's a lot of uh, market uh, there for uh, competitors to, to take. And so we still believe that um, there's, there's still a great opportunity there even with competitors coming in. And we believe we've got a competitive advantage because of our tie up with PVCom Bank. All right, great, thank you. Um, next question. Does BMT need injection of capital when the SME platform launches to expand the business? Will it come from Jefferson Street Capital via the greed out uh, in the S1? Will it come from Alpha Sigma or will it come from other sources? Well, I mean, we, 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 I mean, as you know, we have those agreements with Jefferson Street and Alpha, and so that is one of our avenues for for capital for when we do um, launch the platform. But we're we're consistently talking to other um, capital sources that also are interested in uh, coming in uh, when the platform launches. And so, as you pointed out, you know, in, in one of your earlier questions, you know, this is a business where we will. Um, consistently be raising capital um, to do this, much like uh, Aspire or any of the others, uh, in order to grow uh, grow the business. So we're consistently um, talking to uh, sources uh, to prepare for being able to scale. Okay, great. Um, next question: Is there a floor cap for the Jefferson or Alpha Sigma agreement? For example, how? Um, Many of the financial agreements will cap the institutional investors from buying new shares below 10 cents per shares uh, due to conflict of interest. Um, no, there's nothing uh, in the agreements um, for that right now. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll skip over this question since you already answered a lot of it, but I guess I'll just ask okay. one. Um, sure. Will there be a new brand name to the platform or will the platform name be Vimonti or will it be you know, some other name? 
No, it'll be under the Vermonti brand. It will it will not be you know under PVCom Bank uh, brand or anything like that. It'll be under the Vermonti brand name. Okay, great, thanks. Um, just in regards to how VMT will handle private data, um, you know, basically, how will you guys handle the private data? Will you utilize a third party to host all the data in storage, or will everything be hosted in house? Um, well, I mean, we'll, we'll host everything in our platform. Um, we do have, you know, data servicing providers, um, that we work with, that, that we work with and that we have agreements with, um, that, um, you know, have to adhere to all of the privacy and, um, uh, private data collection, uh, requirements that we have uh, associated with Vietnam and the state bank. And that's where we get the guidance of our partner, PVCom bank and so forth. And, and all of this is being uh, tested during the, the pilot run and so forth. All right, great. Thank you. Um, and then the one, the one last uh, P thing on there is, is that we own the data, meaning Vermonti does. Okay. Awesome. Glad sure. to hear that. <clears throat> Um, next question, why is the M&A important to VMNT? Were there thoughts of developing the operation team organically? Are there any updates to the M&A? Well, I mean, in terms of, uh, I mean, M&A is something that we look at because we're always evaluating the decision on whether to build or buy um, and, and, and what makes sense. So, I mean, you know, right now, uh, the team we have is organically developed, um, but um, if we come across, you know, somebody in the fintech space that could um, accelerate our growth or provide uh, technical expertise that, um, that, uh, that, that makes sense, that could accelerate or even add value to what we're doing, um, you know, we, we definitely um, would entertain doing something like that. Um, so it really depends upon, uh, you know, what we would come across or what we might potentially need and if it makes more sense to buy it rather than to, um, to build it. But right now we're building it. Okay. Gotcha. I guess this question is more in line to a specific, uh, tweet that Tan had posted over last summer regarding an m and I believe it was discussed in the last call as well, where you guys were just working on finalizing something. Is there any information that you could share regarding that specific m a or not really uh not at the, not at this time okay thank you for that um so number 20 is bobby still part of the team besides tan <laughs> Steve, and ernie how many people are currently working for bmnt um yeah i mean bobby of course is is still part of the team um like i um uh, you know Tan, Ernie, Bobby, and I, we, we work at the holding company. We do have, uh, we have hired people uh, in Vietnam um, and, and we're rolling out the, the pilot uh, there also. So um, we are starting to expand the team. And when the, we come out of the pilot uh, testing phase and start to um, roll it out, um, we'll expand the team significantly there and it'll be primarily in Vietnam. Okay, so I guess, Next question, just relating to new hires, you expect them to happen um, in yep. Vietnam or U.S. Both, just Vietnam. Uh, primarily, primarily Vietnam. I mean, it, I mean, there'll probably be there probably be a couple. There might be employees hired in the U.S. You know, as we scale, and we might need to um, increase uh, some of the functions that are typical of a holding company, with related to. Um, finance and um, investor relations and things like that. But um, since we're primarily Southeast Asia uh, based and focused, it would most likely be here. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Um, so we want to talk about the M&A. Uh, is Defiato still being considered an M&A target? Um, I'll take that one, Steve. Um, yeah. Not at this point, Jimmy. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Tan, on a previous call, you talked about how PBCOM liked USDV. Um, how would PBCOM benefit from US, using USDV and what did they like about it? If you want to talk about that, I'm not sure if you can, maybe we should. Yeah, I, I actually don't recall ever making such statement. Oh. Um, well, Jimmy, what? Five. Well, Jimmy, in terms of the the USDV and, and that type of stuff, I mean, um, while we while we do have an interest in it, and we still have a very strong interest in it, 
with what's going on with the SEC and U.S. Regula regulations and how um, you can see how a lot of these um, companies that are uh, associated with USD or with um, you know stablecoin and and Bitcoin um, and the regulatory framework is not in place yet. We basically just paused everything with it. It's not that we don't want to do it. We have a very strong interest, and we think that it can be something that would fit into our business going forward. But right now, there's just no way we would get anything through the SEC. And so we basically communicated to the SEC that until there is uh, a, a, a regulatory framework in terms of how they're going to look at this, that um, we're basically uh, pausing it for now. Yeah. I mean, that, that takes us also to question number 25, um, you know, Jimmy. I mean, and also, you know, please allow me to readdress question 23 uh, and 24 as well. Uh, like Steve said, we're not doing anything crypto related at the moment. Um, and as previously disclosed, uh, to do, uh, due to the lack of a clear legal framework, uh, we currently do not foresee any crypto related activity to be without regulatory and uh, compliant risks. Uh, and therefore, we have suspended all crypto projects. And looking at how the SEC is taking up action against stablecoin and crypto issues, we believe that this position is consistent with the public interest and with the um, and the protection of our investors. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The SEC is not messing around right now. Um, right. They're throwing the hammer. Um, but on to question 26, uh, the Monty social media has been very quiet recently. Is this the request of PB Comp Bank to uh, remain quiet or there's some other reason? Uh, yes, yes and no. Um, first of all, we do need to be very mindful about our social uh, media uh, activity, you know, due to the fact that we are indeed aiming to be eventually uh, a, a licensed financial institution. Uh, but us being quiet lately is more at the direction of our investment banker uh, while we're placing the strategic pieces in place for our NASDAQ uplisting. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I guess the next question then, what role will Network One Financial Securities play in helping the VMT raise additional capital? How will Network One Financial Securities help in NASDAQ uplisting? Well, they're our exclusive banker and underwriter. Uh, we are officially engaged with them to raise up to $20 million, and they are tasked with uh, getting us up to NASDAQ. Okay, great. Is NASDAQ uplisting a realistic goal in 2023, in your opinion? Uh, yes. Uh, we're confident uh, that the ones or the plans we have in motion right now are fully executed. Uh, we'll meet the proper listing requirements, including pricing, without doing a reverse split. That would be fantastic. Um, Tan, in a previous call, you said everything we do is about lending and payments. How will VMT improve the payment experience of SMEs, our products and the works relating to improving the payment efficiency? Yeah, uh, Steve, you touched on this a little bit. Do you wanna just continue that discussion? Sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, the first thing is is that uh, lending is the, the the big key in terms of what they want. But in terms of improving the payment uh, experience for SMEs, um, you know, we are working with PB Com Bank, and because of that partnership, we do have the ability to, um, you know, transfer various funds uh, into Vietnamese Dom. But what we're really working with them uh, to do is, is to be able to, on our platform, uh, move uh, currency back and forth. Think of like TransferWise or TransferWise or Revolut. Um, we're looking to uh, be able to do that and handle payments very similarly uh, to that in Vietnam where SMEs can make payments on our platform and that we're uh, moving payments in bulk which would then uh, reduce the cost um, that we could pass on to the various um, uh, customers that we have uh, going forward. 
but that's that's really what we're working on. And, and, and part of that is, has to dovetail um, with a few updates that are happening to the digital uh, banking law in Vietnam. And once those updates are done, where they clarify the gray areas associated with wholesale payments and wholesale movement of funds on behalf of others, um, we'll be able to um, finalize and clarify that pro uh, that product. All right, excellent. Um, Ten, you described the MNT as having an ecosystem approach to supporting the SMEs of Vietnam, Southeast Asia. Can you describe what you mean by ecosystem? How will VMNT products be integrated into the functions of the SMEs to bring them into the VMNT ecosystem? In the future, what products do you expect to be offered to SMEs in the VMNT ecosystem? Actually, um, this goes back to the lending and uh, payment solutions that uh, Steve has been talking about all night long. Um, so Steve, do you wanna just continue explain more on that? Yeah. Um, so, so the idea with the, with, with the uh, ecosystem approach is is that um, if we can if we can provide solve two of their their big problems, one is of course lending, and then the second one is the cost um, of payments. The idea is is that once we have that, is is that we if you think of the way that bankers um, you know have a cadre of partners that they work with, you know, such as if a company comes and wants to, uh, for instance, um, get a loan, but they may not have the expertise in terms of putting together financial statements, or um, they're looking to sell their company, but they don't know how to position it for the sale or negotiate it. It's, it's putting together um, those type of partners that could be part of the platform and ecosystem that can help small businesses in uh, challenges that they have. Um, for instance, you know, how do I open an office in the U.S. so that I can take orders? Um, you know, many companies don't have something like that. Or, you know, what are some basic information that I need about, you know, potentially setting up and exporting to the U.S. or the Europe or something like that? So once we solve their, th those two problems, the idea is, is to build an ecosystem around that that can offer them other advice and services uh, that could help them further uh, the business uh, that they're doing um, as an export company in those markets uh, that, that, that would help them expand their business once they solve two of the biggest problems that they have. Great, thank you for that. Uh clarity there um next question has to do with payments again i feel like you've already answered all that um tan and steve um so we'll just skip on to number 32. um is it possible or will it be possible to know names of companies who become clients of the mt service if not can we at least know how many companies are participating in the pilot i know the pilot just recently launched so we may not know that but is there a plan to publicize who are clients of uh the vmt platform or not really uh, no, we, can, we, we, we cannot um, because we're, we're bound by the banking laws. So PVCom Bank can't disclose its customers. You know, I mean, it can in marketing material if the company agrees, but um, basically um, privacy require, you know, maintains that we, we cannot um, uh, disclose that. Gotcha. Um, number 33, I feel like it's been asked already. Um, number 34, with the news often mentioning factories relocating from China to Vietnam, how and who are working at VMT to reach out to potential clients? Bad grammar there. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's okay. Um, right now, it, 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 it's me. Um, you know, I mean, I, having run uh, a company, uh, an export related company here in Vietnam and being part of the US. And European Chamber of Commerce. Um, I see most. Of, I see a lot of the the big companies that are are relocating, as well. And and then based upon those big companies, um, I'm seeing the their smaller suppliers that are also um, relocating. Or those big companies are often reaching out. Um, a couple have even reached out to me to say, look, where can I find suppliers since I've I've moved here? So. Um, 
being part of the US uh, Chamber of Commerce and the European Chamber of Commerce here, I'm seeing um, a lot of that and um, I'm making those uh, connections. And then once we get to the end of the pilot, towards the end of the pilot phase, um, we've identified a couple of uh, business uh, development, uh, local business development officers, Vietnamese that um, have uh, ties into these uh, sectors that are interested um, in coming to work with us. All right, awesome. Um, is there a list of planned products to be rolled out after this pilot completes? If so, what are their statuses with milestone dates? Well, I mean, the, the, the product that we're rolling out is our receivable financing and invoice financing um, uh, product. So um, that one, that is the, the product that we're doing in the pilot and that is the one that will be uh, rolled out. Okay, great. Um, almost done the list. Um, mm. What steps are you taking to improve communication between the company and the shareholders? Well, uh, Jimmy, as you can tell by now, that we're not a company that puts out press releases unless we feel it's material. Uh, but we do want to be helpful to our investors. So, you know, we, we've been up to date with our filings and we'll continue to try to do calls like this uh, once a quarter. Um, however, as you know, mentioned earlier, uh, we've been instructed by uh, Network One to disclose for the time being only um, as required. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Tan. And I guess the kind of piggybacks off of the final question. Um, you said quarterly calls. Are there any other ways that you plan on communicating with the investment community regarding, um, I guess, shareholder updates? Yeah, I mean, I understand investors want to hear about our business and the issues you know affecting our sector as well as insights about our future prospects. Uh, this is definitely something we want to do. Uh, once we have completed our plans to get onto NASDAQ, uh, we'll be looking at retaining a professional IR firm to manage you know, shareholder uh, communication on an ongoing basis. Okay, awesome. Um, well, Tan, Steve, thank you for answering these questions. Really appreciate it. Um, provide a lot of insight to what's going on with the company. Well, um, Thank you, uh, Jimmy. Um, if, uh, if I may, uh, please allow me to have sort of like a closing statement. Um, we are all here today. Well, you know, you are all here today uh, because you have all chosen to be part of uh, VMT due to a mutual passion for the company's vision and mission. And we sincerely thank you for that. Um, we're still here. And that's still focused on doing what we need to do to graduate to the next level as a digital banking platform. Now, long-term outlook uh, for our target market is still very optimistic. Uh, no doubt, um, there are some headwinds uh, for Vietnam's export-reliant economy uh, due to lack of orders, which is kind of in line with the global manufacturing downturn, uh, which has led to short-term pain for some factory workers. Uh, however, uh, Vietnam still retains its position as one of the top investment destinations in Asia and Pacific and continue, uh, continues to benefit from its status as a China plus one destination. And with the Vietnamese government continues to commit to substantial infrastructure improvement, uh, major players are still keen on expanding and entering in Vietnam market. So, you know, on top of that, we also predict that um, China's reopening will have uh, a very positive impact on uh, Vietnam's GDP in the second half of 2023. So overall, we, we still feel very, very strongly uh, that we're targeting the right market. Now, as a company, we absolutely want to move up to NASDAQ, not only to adhere to higher standards, but also to show our investors that we're here to stay. That is one of our key objectives for 2023. Uh, but again, due to the nature of our business, uh, the business that we're trying to build, uh, it, it takes planning and execution, so we need to do things organically in steps. Uh, the good news is things are progressing in the right direction, and we have an investment banker committed to making that happen for us. 
Um, during the next few weeks and months, you will be learning more about our plan activities, uh, where you will get a clear picture of all the components we're putting together. I assure you that it will all make sense. Um, so my message to all the shareholders is uh, thank you for still supporting us and believing in us. Um, we're near an inflection point in the history of the R&T, and as stated before, we're applying the best of ourselves at what we're setting out to do for the company. So thank you for your time and your unwavering support. We wish you and your family all the best, uh, and please enjoy the rest of your evening. Awesome closeout, Tan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Um, thank you all who joined and looking forward to seeing where VMT goes in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank you, guys.